I'm now going to show you how I shade these uh, scrolls. I've noticed quite a few engravers today do a reasonably good outline of their scrolls. But when it comes to shading, they because they're working under the microscope, they have a tendency to overshade. They make it too much black, 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 black. Here, that's when you see it with the naked eye, you see. So I would draw mine like this. And don't put too much in. You follow the curve around here. See, it darkens here normally. So I'm working under the video now and make sure that I've got it correct so I've turned the paper sometimes I hope it doesn't go out of view so this is where it's going to come from you see so you've got various parts of this scroll here and you've got these little gaps here so I would start here I won't take it all the way around yet you see I, I bring it around here because I don't want to hit this back here at the moment so I bring it down. I'm working with a pen. So this is what your graver is going to be. And it normally starts thin to thick. But of course this is a mono line on here. So I've got to exaggerate just this little dark area. So that's the dark area you need. Just this shadow here. And maybe you don't need too much here. But of course a lot of them, they do the whole lot. Then they cross hatch. And it darkens so much. You see? So you just need these little bits like that. And it would leave all your various other scrolls looking like this. So you can actually see the outline of what you did. And the beauty of it, as I say before, is the curving of the line. And follow the line round. Because this is only a shadow recall, remember. And the shadow comes down and it could form this which would make this look solid on the inside, you see. So there's your narrow stem along the back here. Um, because we're doing it linear, that's what you have to do. Now, a lot of, a lot of them, as I said before, cross-hatch too. There's nothing wrong with cross-hatching. It's quite good, really. You need it. But don't overdo it, you see, because it looks too much... And regularly, if they do it regularly all over the place, there's no... See the here again, I'll just do this. Now this is off here. So I could just turn that into another little sh shape here. And then I will just put a line around, because if it's according to the size of the scroll. If they're small and you don't put too much in, it's smothered. So you only need that there, just to give the impression. And... Uh, so I'm still in view. That's good. So I might just put a couple here like that. But these are, I'm drawing this large. And of course on a gun or, or maybe on a knife, it's going to condense down to a certain thing, you see, so, a size. So here I'm going here. One, two. I don't need to put a lot of black in there. And... and it's not a, a wicked fence, because that's what a lot of it looks like. It's all the same length. You've got to vary it. It's a shadow. You might just do that there, you see, just to put a two little lines in there. And then what we do uh, here on occasions, because you've seen this, is called fluting. And Weldon is well known for doing fluting on his work. It's Weldon Lister we're talking about. And so that's the hallmark of Weldon's work, you see. And so you will spot this here. I would do it on occasions, not all all around. But that's that's what um, us engravers all have our own little. Paul marker. I'm still in. That's good. <laughs> I've done these videos before and I found that I'm talking to myself after them. So, 
We're not trying too much, you see? So that's what you need, just a few lines here for this type of work. You're tr what you're doing is trying with ordinary engraving is more or less giving the impression of what your carving would be. Where am I? I'm still here. Am I? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> You have to forgive me for all these things like that. So I'm following it around, you see. I'm following it around there and coming in there. It gives a little, another little shadow there, the shape there. And I will bring it around here and there. And I could darken it in there. The pen doesn't always do what the graver does, you see. That's what I am doing. Of course, this would be all done in a cut, but I'm just emphasising that you can leave it like that because it's a size if whatever the size of your scroll is if it's very large yes you need to put a little bit more into the thing to you know to keep it interesting but i'm now I'm back shading i'm pulling it this way because i'm looking from a different angle so i'm pulling it out this way okay but when you're engraving i you normally cut that way back but the, that is a problem when people, again, use tracings and a graver that goes any way because it's got the pneumatic force behind it. People just don't bother which angle they are. They just go from back to front. If it turns out, well, do it. There's no law to say... You can't do it, but if you start with a basis of a knowing and getting the advice from a professional to know what it should look like, that's where you go. Over the years, when you get more and more confidence and more experience and maybe brought into your work, you do other things with it. That's how it progresses. But bad work doesn't progress, you, you see. So knowing what you want is this, you see. So now that's how I've shaded that. I'll just do this last one here. Keep the video fairly short. And that's giving you the impression of what your shading should be like. It can go a little bit darker here and it will darken here. And there, you see, I can make that a little turnover if I wanted to, so you can turn it in there. And maybe cut a little bit in there if I feel like it. And let's see where we go from there. I'm turning it around so I can see what I'm doing, and you can see what I'm doing. So I'm doing this, so I can just do it to there, and then I can do it here. It's, um, as I mentioned before, it was some of the other scrolls that they use maybe they're not streamlining it as long as this and it's can be a bit short but they you should for the interest of yourself or being artistic um, and you've got to think of your customer if he's well up into knowing what scroll what it should look like you vary it it's a thing you read. It's, it's not just a thing you glance at for five seconds and they say, that's very nice, and carry on from there. It should be there for you to say, wow, what's that there? And that's a bit, that's interesting. Let's see, I'm putting a flute in here now because I looked at it and seen it for myself. Here, so I put the flute in. That gives the impression of it being a tube like here, you see. When we say a flute, I suppose you've got little keys on your flute or a little where the vowels go. So that's that. Now, <clears throat> just a quickie here. Um, let's see, this paper's a little bit awkward. Just to give you what the outside work is, because this is outside work, but that reflects what's on the inside. So it's this guy here, which I'll work from. You can see here that this is how I did it last time to give you like a construction, the easy way by doing it in the an angular and in the rectangular way. 
but we could do that later. But you see, now I'll come off the back here because this is the here, and now I need something to grow off the outside. And because it's not within lines and a block, and it's open, this is the sort of thing you do just to get the beautiful shape. So you come here, you see. So you're reflecting more or less what's on the inside. Maybe not so large. And what I've done, you see here, emphasize this darker line here. So when you do your cut, it's a this type of cut. You see, so I'm darkening that. I've gone from thin to thick. But that now creates its own shadow, you see? And then you do that. Now, if you're cutting all the same depth all the way around, it becomes monotonous. It's, it's there. It hasn't created that. You see the sun shining from this side, and it's created a shadow there, and it's created a shadow there. Now, because I've got the thicker pen, it would be different, but I'm going to shade in here and there and there, you see? So it goes on there. And so I would shade gradually onto here. And I'm following the line, all of these curves around. I'm not going straight, 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 straight. See? So there we go. That would give you a quick idea of what I'm after. See you soon. Bye for now.